There is some new earthquake plate break information that really affects not just localized populations. We're talking globalized populations. So we're going to dive right into this right now. So we're dealing with multiple different zones, having different alerts from UK, getting a tsunami risk alert today on what happened in Spain. More floods happening all across America. Just today, sciencemagazine.org came out and said, natural hazards such as earthquakes, fires, and floods can dramatically affect human life and infrastructure. Recent science review researchers argue the need of unified interdisciplinary approach to study cascading land surface hazards. So they are looking at new hazardous risk response mitigation plans as we speak. But the biggest effects are lingering underneath the Pacific right as we speak. Nature.com released that there are slab detachment zones that are shifting in the Pacific. So today we're going to be looking out for watch out zones, what's currently happening and specifically what is happening in the Pacific, with the plates breaking and how is this going to affect things. So in order for you to get alerts right away, sign up for emergencyemail.org. I will have the link after this video is over. You click it and then it's going to say, click your state. Click your state after that's going to show the county then you can sign up with your email and you'll get all alerts for flash floods anything else that's coming it always alerts you all right let's talk about watch out zones let's talk about the localized areas no matter where you're at across the world this map that sciencemagazine.org pulled out today let's take a look at it on screen this is the hazardous cascade components interactions. And as you can see, critical zones, initiation and run out. These are where we're currently seeing, as we speak, sheriffs warning people like in Idaho, saying that this is going to be a major place you need to be watching out for. Because as this shift with tectonics happen, we're going to start seeing a lot of these landslides rocks falling all this is going to start being even hazardous for roads so if you live next to those areas plan accordingly to what i'm saying here secondly we're going to see erosion off coastlines and other things potentially starting to happen as we're already seeing i could take you right now on screen look at this right here australia just recently this was hours ago coming out and talking about how there's erosion along the coast here and cliffs are falling into the ocean. This is on Robes Erosion Woes Worsen. Australia Broadcasting Corporation put this out. In some places across the world, it's gotten so bad they had to close schools because it's just getting that much of an uptick. So warning, if you're around these areas, you're driving around these, you know, different landscapes just take into account the potential activity before you take a drive through there in the potential situation that is currently active so that you know exactly how to map out not getting caught into some of these scenarios that are at hand and if you subscribe here we're getting out all that information to you and talking deeply about stuff that really needs to be heard scientists just came out and said that there is a pulse beneath the earth and it could tear a continent apart. The ring of fire is where the U.S. military was drilling that because Japan had a rip underneath the ocean in the Pacific. This same area in the Pacific, the farther line plate, we now have information that there is cracks happening deeper here and there is huge shifts happening. Now let's pull up this map though and really take a look at what is really happening. First, nature.com put this out about mantle driven plate convergence due to slab detachment 
when we're looking at detachment scenarios here you can see the highest elevation where it is orange is looking we'll come back let's read this the formation of overriding plates whereas continental trench collisions can lead to substantial tectonic uplift in solar zones mid-ocean ridges bounding incoming plates accelerating plate motion and ridge trench collision scenarios and induce considerable tectonic uplift in continental trench collision scenarios as evidenced by acceleration of the Faralian plate ridge spread and the rapid uplift of the Himalayas after slab detachment. This is for survivability. You need to take a look at this really quick and listen to me. Look at all these zones up here that look orange. These are the highest points if we had tsunami risk and there was a need for us to have an evac plan in localized areas to go to these zones in case it just got so flooded because the sound of voices in my head can never go away when Hurricane Katrina hit and we were in our attic and we hear people screaming and going down the road and basically dying through the floods. And preparedness really changes everything. Most of those people didn't take it seriously. So can y'all all just please go back, screenshot all the maps, get it so you have it. Let me know if you've done that so I can just feel better about this information I'm giving to you. Next up, we have to get into the further triggered effects, what's happening in the Pacific, because this is what really tells the story of what's going to be happening. USA Today says volcanoes in multiple states have been rumbling. And Nature.com reports, alternatively, the vigorous mantle flow triggered by slab detachment may provide additional forces that drive the Pacific plate towards trench in the same direction shortly after the secession of Aznaji plate subduction and the corresponding acceleration of Falalan Pacific Ridge spreading. So let's put this in a term so where we can get it. Imagine a piece of the Earth's crust breaking. And when that piece broke and snapped, it went deep off. And it was like a suction that happened whenever it, the basically plates start to break underneath the Earth. And the suction basically started to pull everything. Let's go down here. This break caused Pacific plate to move even faster toward the ring of fire, more speed, more pressure and more earthquakes and tsunamis and volcanoes is what this is specifically talking about here. Uh, I'm going to read a little bit more because this also is what it means here. This means the Pacific region, Japan, U.S., West Coast, Chile, Indonesia are under more pressure than ever. The earth is not slowing down. It's entering a new phase. And these are some of the faults you can see from USGS inside of United States. Now, there's something else right now that they currently came out and said, and I'm going to give what people are saying, unconfirmed reports that cougars and grizzlies are leaving Yellowstone. That's coming out today. I just seen that in the comment section. I have to confirm that. But let's go into this right here right now, because they said a new stretch of creeping California fault line was discovered. Why is this important? Because this means it's capable of a 6.7 or higher earthquakes. Uh, the link, the study is an urban development overlay of the path, and it puts tens of thousands at risk and havoc brought by the earthquakes and seismic activity. This is a classification that will impact real estate, disclosures, construction re uh, requirements, and long-term urban planning. California Geological Survey designated this as part of official earthquake fault. They just come out a few days and start telling us this stuff like, why would they come out and just tell us in a few days about this? What do y'all think about that? So let's talk about this break. So this break caused the Pacific plate to move even faster towards the ring of fire. And we have the increased movement now all throughout, not just the United States, as you've seen this right here. You just tuned in. You didn't see this. This was today. Spain got hit with a 5.3. And not just Spain got hit with a 5.3. This is what it looked like after that. Off the coast of Panama, they got hit with a 6.2. You can see right here is affected uh, countries, Costa Rica and Panama. So we're seeing a lot of this stuff start to happen. Uh, here's another thing that officials are tracking the earthquake in Mount Rainier. 
say there is no cause for concern. PBS News puts that out. But here's the thing. You got to be tracking every little detail when you're going to these locations. Because like I said, preparedness is the best thing that you can do right now. The, the big picture, though, is the zones that are like this down here. I'm going to put this in the chat because I think this is very important. The safe zones we mentioned, the video that the ring of fire is escalating earthquakes and flood survival zones. We drop that in the live chat right now because that's going to be a real critical difference to the picture here that we put that together as a survival plan. Now, people from that video in different locations, because I mentioned the Ozarks and they told me, they said, wait a minute, you need to run that back a little bit. And I'm going to give those uh, reports. They said, I live in the Ozarks, because this was one of the safe zones in the higher regions anyway. I live in Ozarks, Arkansas. I'm real close to Boston Mountains and Arkansas River is really up right now. If we get more rain, it's going to get really bad. It will knock the power out of Arkansas and Missouri and St. Louis, they said. Another person said, never been to Texas Hill County, but hilly areas like Ozarks, because Ozarks is another area, don't have a big wide floodplains. There's nowhere for water to go except right down the river. Floods come fast in these areas with tons of force. Here's what I noticed. When I was in Hurricane Katrina and the floods in Mississippi area in the southern regions versus the western regions, this is the problem. And this is why you should seek high ground right away, because in the south, we have floods happening in our gutter systems and our sewage on the side of the water. The areas like the concrete is open, so the water goes out. So when it got flooded, we got like six feet. That was during Katrina, but that didn't take that long to go down after it was gone. I see some areas stay flooded for so long. It took probably from like after Katrina was done, the storm went over, the eye was gone. It probably took maybe like two hours for the water to be gone. Now, I've seen in Western regions where the water stays up and it's because I look at the side of the roads and they don't have that opening right there. What they have is waterway exits and those waterway exits don't drain down deep. So it is causing the flood to actually stay a little longer. So even when a little bit of rain happens, there's puddles all over the road and it stays there for a long time. In Mississippi, in the Southern areas, that goes down very fast. So if you're in those Western regions or you're in those regions where the sewer systems are not open in the side areas, that's gonna be something you need to pinpoint right away because that means you're gonna have water sitting there for longer periods of time. Elevating all your valuables, important. Making sure that you have Wind up radios, all these things, highly important. As this earthquake and activity keep peaking, we're going to be here covering all the details that you need to know. So are you going to stay here, subscribe? And like I said, the link once again for all the new people tuning in, subscribe because again, this video right here is going to be highly critical. We're going to cover all the new updates, everything coming out in the safe zones, survival zones. That's in the chat. We'll have it on the left hand side too. You need to check that out right away. Do not let them hide that.